Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. You might have seen a recent video series of mine where I incorporated sea moss into different applications like cold process soap, built in pore soap, and a beautiful facial cream. Since those videos have been published, I've been getting a lot of requests to make a sea moss shower gel or body wash. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be making a sea moss body wash. So if you've seen my other sea moss videos, then you know that there are a ton of benefits to adding it to your skincare line and also your hair and your diet. It's got a ton of minerals that your body uses and also it's full of collagen, which gives your skin that youthful glow and kind of that plump bounce back. Um, one reason we would want to use it in a shower gel type product, it's going to have dual purpose. So it's very, very good for your skin, but it also adds a lot of thickness and viscosity to your soap. In this video, I'm going to be going over with you my step-by-step -step process and giving you a full visual tutorial of how to make this shower gel. If you're interested in the full written recipe plus tutorial, please head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe and tutorial for just a small $5 pledge. In fact, you can still unlock so many recipes and tutorials for just that one $5 pledge. There's a whole bunch to take advantage of over there. So if you're interested in that, the link to my campaign is in the description box below. Go check it out. Also, if you like this content, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, share this video with a friend. All of that really helps out my channel analytics and it helps me bring to you what you want to see. All right, let's make some shower gel. Okay, so the first thing you want to do for this shower gel is go ahead and process your sea moss. So that just means we're going to go ahead and weigh out what we need dry. So it just comes in the package completely dry looking like this. And we want to go ahead and rinse off the sea moss. It's full of little bits of debris and salt. And so we're going to go ahead and give this a good rinse under the tap water. And then I'll bring you back for the next step. Once your sea moss is all the way thoroughly rinsed off, you're going to go ahead and put it in a bowl and cover it with cool water and you can just cover it with tap water. And we're just going to want to wash it off a little bit more and just make sure we're getting any of the dirt and debris and you might see the water start to go a little bit cloudy. And that's why I'm using a glass bowl so you can see kind of how the water just starts to turn a little bit cloudy. So we still have some washing to do. So we're just washing off the sea, the sea moss. So once this water goes cloudy, we want to go ahead and uh, dump this water and just get some fresh tap water again. And just we're going to continue this process until we get clear water. So as you can see, my water has gone quite cloudy. So I'm going to go dump this refill it and I'll bring you back when the water wash water has gone completely clear. All right now my sea moss is quite clean as you can see that water is very clear so we're going to go ahead and transfer the sea moss into a large pan. Okay once your sea moss is drained off and now sitting in your large pan you want to go ahead and cover it with distilled water. What we're doing at this point is we're preparing the water that we're going to be using for the soap, for the shower gel. So we want to make sure we're using enough water for the recipe, but also not too much water that we don't create a nice sea moss gel. That will make some more sense as we go along. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like now. So we want to go ahead and cover up the sea moss with water. And we're going about an inch or so over. So I know that this is going to be enough water for my recipe because I've already measured everything out. So let's go ahead and go to the next step. Okay, so some of the audio didn't get recorded on this video, so I'm just doing a little voiceover recording of what I'm doing here at the stove. All I'm doing is turning the water on high. I'm just trying to render down and cook down that sea moss. So I'm going to turn the stove on high in just a minute here. And then I'm also going to be putting the lid 
on just to catch any evaporation that might be coming out during the cook process. So I'm just going to be cooking this down and breaking down the sea moths just to release that collagen and that carrageenan into the water. And that's what we're going to be infusing our shower gel with. So we are making a surfactant based shower gel. So it's a good idea while your sea moss is processing or cooking down to go ahead and weigh off your surfactants because as soon as that hot water from the sea moss is ready, we're gonna go ahead and incorporate it into our surfactants. So we wanna make sure all of that is ready to go. So we are using two different surfactants today and they're both liquid. So the benefit of that is we don't have to melt down any um, noodles or hard surfactant matter. We, we're just gonna go ahead and weigh out two different types of liquid surfactants. So the first surfactant or the primary surfactant that we're using today is one called sodium lauryl ether sulfate or otherwise known as SLES. It is not the same as SLS. Um, they're different. This is water soluble. It's made from coconuts and it's very gentle and it's an anionic surfactant. We're going to go ahead and add in our SLES. It's got nice bubbles and foam. And it's got a nice viscosity to it already. As you can see, it's pouring in. It's already pretty thick, which is nice when you're making liquid soap. Okay. And then directly to this, we're gonna be adding in our loramidal propyl betaine. This is gonna be our secondary surfactant. It is amphoteric. It's naturally de derived from vegetable sources. So we're making a plant-based surfactant shower gel. Now we're just going to set these aside. I'm not even going to stir this up because it tends to get a little bit stiff and sticky before the water is combined. This exact mixture is. So we're just going to go ahead and set it aside and be ready to add our water to it when the time comes. All right. So at this point in the process, I was just going to give you an update on what was going on with the sea moss cooking on the stove. So as you can see, it's been about 10 minutes of cooking on low heat now, and the sea moss is continuing to break down and render and lose its structure, which is exactly what we want to see, but it's still not quite broken down enough. So we're going to allow this to simmer for another 10 minutes or so for a total of 20 minutes. Okay, so my sea moss has been cooking now for about 20 minutes and it's very hot. So we're gonna go ahead and collect the water into this pitcher and just um, catch all of the little bits of sea moss in the top. Very carefully, it's hot. Okay, I'm just gonna let that drain. Now, the amazing thing about this is if you leave this water here to sit till it reaches room temperature undiluted, you will see that it goes completely solid at room temperature, like the consistency of um, jello or like a jello square or jello candy. That is vegan collagen, and that's what we're using to thicken up our sea moss soap. Really, we're using the collagen from the sea moss to thicken the soap up and it has amazing skin benefits like we talked about before. So just a really cool process. Um, I've really enjoyed experimenting with this. Actually, I haven't seen anybody else making a shower gel, so I'm sure people are doing it, but this is really me experimenting and finding this recipe. I did this just uh, based on my own knowledge and uh, research. So here we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that water in there. Okay. Now, as you can see, we've got lots of sea moss bits in here. So what I'm gonna do 
let's just go ahead and set this aside. And then the next thing we're gonna do is weigh off the water for this soap. So we're gonna go ahead and get our scale back here. And here is our liquid surfactant blend. Now I am dividing this up. I'm not using 100% of the sea moss water because like I said, I believe that the soap would become too thick. Actually, I know it would because I've tried in my experimenting. Um, the soap does get quite thick if you don't dilute it down. So we are gonna be using a blend of the sea moss water in conjunction with distilled water. Okay, and then we're just gonna remove this and give it a good stir before we add in anything else and just make sure our surfactants are nice and blended in. Being careful not to, trying not to incorporate too many bubbles in this process. As you can see, it's already getting some foam and some bubbles. So we're just gonna wanna mix until all of those liquid surfactants are evenly dispersed. And if you are getting lots of bubbles, like me, you can use your rubbing alcohol and just kind of spritz it down and squelch those bubbles. Okay, and while this is still warm, we're gonna go ahead and add in the other ingredients, but I'm gonna give this a second to combine. Okay, and while this is still warm and all mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in the rest of the ingredients. So next thing we're adding in here is glycerin. Now the glycerin in conjunction with the sea moss is a beautiful humectant. So both of those things combined are gonna bring the soap uh, moisture as you use it actually it's going to draw moisture to your skin and help your skin retain moisture so then we're also going to be adding in our uh, preservative at this point we are using liquid germal plus this is great for products that have high water content There we go. And we're gonna give this a good blend. Now, as you can see, this is soap is setting up already very, very nicely. It's got a nice viscosity already to it. So I'm actually not gonna be adding in my fragrance oil this time while it's warm because I want you to see how the fragrance oil that I'm using reacts with this soap. Okay, so then the next thing I'm gonna do here is just add in a tiny, tiny bit of water-soluble dye. A little bit goes a long way. So we're just gonna be using teal water-soluble dye from Fizz Fairy. Okay, so the important thing to know with this type of dye is a little bit goes a long, long way. So you cannot take color out once you've added it. So it's important to just start with the tiniest little bits. Stir it in until you know, until you've achieved your desired color. As you can see, we're already getting a nice teal color.
And I'm actually gonna leave it just like that. I think that's a very nice shower gel blue color, nice teal. Um, and that, you guys, was just the tiniest little bit. Like I couldn't even weigh it out, it's so tiny. So that is exactly the kind of the color I was going for. It's hard to see with this stainless bowl, but um, I'm just going for kind of like a nice ocean blue, going for kind of an ocean theme here with the sea moss. All right, and I will bring you back when this has reached room temperature so I can show you exactly what the thickness looks like and exactly what happens when we add this fragrance oil. Okay, so the soap has reached room temperature and I just wanted to show you this beautiful awesome consistency. It's a beautiful consistency for shower gel or body wash. And that is just mainly from that sea moss infused water. It infused it with all that amazing collagen and carrageenan and it's, it's a natural thickener and it's great for your skin. I mean, it's just amazing all around amazing. So this is where it makes me kind of sad because I haven't found a fragrance oil that doesn't thin this this formula out so we will have to do some thickening but the good news is, is we're going to thicken this up with salt so i want to show you exactly what the fragrance oil does to this formula of course you could leave it completely unfragranced or you can experiment with any of your own fragrances to see if you can find one that does not thin out this formula or sometimes fragrance oils can make your formulas too thick. Um, all the ones that I've been experimenting with in this formula have thinned it out to like a water, a water consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my fragrance oil. And not to worry, we are gonna thicken it back up. And it's probably a good thing because then I get to show you how to thicken it up if this happens to you. And to let you know too that you can really use any fragrance that thins out your product. Um, and there are ways to thicken it up. Okay, so the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna cloud up this shower gel, but it won't stay cloudy. So it's gonna cloud it up and make it go just more opaque. As you can see, it's getting that white streaking that won't last that's just the initial reaction when you very first pour in the fragrance so as you get it mixed in and you let it set for a few minutes it will go very thin it's funny because it initially kind of thickens up and goes goopy and then in a, few, in a few minutes, it will go completely water thin. So I'm gonna stir in just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bring you back after this formula has had time to settle in with the fragrance. And then I'll show you how to get it to the, the correct consistency. But yeah, this is a perfect example of how fragrance oils react with different types of liquid soap. Um, of course, like I said, there are ways to manage this and use the fragrances you like. So I will bring you back in just a few minutes and show you the next step. All right, it's been sitting now for a few minutes and this is what I wanted to show you. So all of that kind of opaqueness has kind of gone away. So it's important to just let your fragrance oil sit before you bottle it up. Let it sit in the formula that you made before you go bottling it up so you can see exactly what it's doing and then take good notes on it so you know what exactly to expect and what types of fragrances you want to use again or maybe not use again. So as you can see, like I said, it totally thins out the formula. So we are actually going to go ahead and thicken this up with just regular old table salt. So I'm going to show you how that works and I'm going to bring it back to that consistency that we um, saw before we added the fragrance oil in. So I'm gonna be adding in, now again, this is one of those things where if you add too much, you can't take it out. So I'm gonna be starting by just adding in about a tablespoon, and then I'm gonna be 
stirring it in. And then also you don't wanna go adding in a whole heaping tablespoon if you're making less soap than this, but I've already done this and I know about how much we're gonna need at this point. So anyway, you go ahead and you stir it in really good and then you keep adding small amounts of table salt until your soap gets to the viscosity and the thickness that you like. Okay, so we've brought it up to a nice viscosity again, but what I'm gonna do now is just let my soap rest for about five to 10 minutes and then come back and test the viscosity again. And if I need to add any more salt, I'll do it at that time before we bottle it up. All right, we are back after that 10 minutes and I did go ahead and add just a little more salt just to give it that nice kind of gel-like consistency. Now you'll notice with this soap, it's not gonna be completely transparent like the pink sugar crystals shower gel that you saw and that's because of the infusion of the sea moss. So we're gonna go ahead and bottle it up into these cute little Boston round um, containers from Nature's Garden. These are eight ounce containers, but they will hold about 10 ounces of shower gel. So this is what I find is the easiest way, just to pour it into something that has a pour tight pitcher on it. And then just pour it in slowly into your containers. There you go. I like to fill mine all the way to the top of that lip just so we don't see any gap in the bottle. And I'll go ahead and fill up the rest. Okay, these are all bottled up and this recipe fills six of these all the way to the top and as you can see it's got a very very gorgeous viscosity and that viscosity will stay it's not going to go flat or anything like that the color is beautiful so i wanted to go ahead and give you a lather demo and show you how this works and i also think i forgot to show you which fragrance i was using so i'm using sea minerals it's a very clean oceanic like fragrance just to keep with the ocean theme i've got going on here so I'll bring you right back for the lather demo. All right, let's see how this works. So we're just gonna pour a little bit here under the top of my loofah. Just start working it in. And I'm getting some really nice, silky, kind of conditioning feeling bubbles. Actually has a really nice conditioning moisturizing feeling to it really really good um, feels amazing actually so this is, has a really nice lather probably not as big as the pink sugar crystals one i shared with you last week but this one has an amazing lather as well and i did use quite a bit of soap on this i probably wouldn't use that much you know ordinarily, but I wanted to show you how this bubbles up. So it's gorgeous and it does draw moisture to the skin. So I'm not getting that dry type of feeling that sometimes some shower gels can leave you feeling. It's very conditioning, silky, and just absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait for you guys to try this out. And so look out for these on my website as well. They'll be listed on my website here pretty soon. And that concludes today's video. I hope you loved everything about it. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, share this video with a friend, and don't forget to leave a comment or question below. Catch you on the next video. Keep shining, bye.